Tom's set, the reason why Master of None episode two resonated was because I don't think that people are that aware of how homogenous stories are mm -hmm. on, on television and now the internet. And so when you do see something, you know, five degrees left or five degrees right, it's like groundbreaking. You can't <laughs> believe, you know, it, it, um, and I, and I work as a writer as well. So I know how stories are generated and I know how things gain traction in a writer's room. And, um, thank God Alan Yang and Aziz Ansari are, uh, big, big dicks. <laughs> <laughs> They're big swinging dicks and they can do anything they want. They mm -hmm. could, they, they wrote that show with a writer's room to be fair, um, with a lot of fun writers, but they also wrote it in somewhat of a creative bubble. They could, they weren't in, um, the oven with, uh, a network, so to speak, or a bunch of execs, they could do whatever they want. And Alan wanted to write about his father. And, uh, and which was, I mean, basically almost a perfect analog to be in my father. So, uh, we got to tell this story that just, you know, isn't normally told. I don't think it resonated because it's PC or because people, uh, want a little, um, seaweed on their hamburger or something. <laughs> <laughs> I think it resonated because it was interesting and cause it was funny. Um, so, uh, I'm sort of jumping right into this whole thing, but to me, I, I, it was really, 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 I, I don't know, indescribable to, to be able to do something like that. And then hold your breath for a few months and have it come out and have people say that was, that was, uh, an important, funny, entertaining 30 minutes, you know, that you put together. So you really truly identified with that character that Alan wrote. And, and so to be clear, what is Alan's... Uh, Taiwanese American. He's Taiwanese yes, American. Yes, Taiwanese American. And uh, the gentleman that it. played... We're, we're taking over. Yeah, yeah. I'm... <laughs> so many of you. Alan is the, is the uh, Asian Beyonce. He's, <laughs> he will not stop. <laughs> I'm serious. I'm like kind of serious. Or does so. he have hot sauce in his bag? He does have hot sauce okay. in his bag. Is it sriracha? Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. It's sriracha. No, the sriracha is made here. What really say here? Um, I think diversity is kind of annoying. Um, <clears throat> and in, a, in the best way. Like you can use, we can use other words. We could use disruptive or agitational or whatever. But... I think annoying is probably the best term because I think it's got to be really annoying. If you're like a straight white guy who's, who's been able to do whatever, who's basically been Don Draper for like, <laughs> you know, just like slapping women and smoking in airplanes. Throwing for like, trash out in right. the yard. Yeah. It's got to be annoying that like all these like gay people and Asian people and black people want a little a bigger pizza, piece of pizza than they've had mm -hmm. than the sliver you've given them. And, and I don't think it's malicious or I, and I really don't see people, maybe they are twiddling their mustaches in dark back rooms, but I think it's just annoying. And, and for me, um, you know, the, you have to, you have to elbow, you have to press in, you have to mm -hmm. press in and box out. And, and once you get into the room, you have to stand your ground. Uh, we're also watching the marketplace change and, Along come, I you know I'm really happy to, to be part of it. But along come people like Aziz and and uh, people like uh, Lee Daniels and and Jenji Cohen and and you know they have totally different stories to tell and there's a market for it and it sucks if you're a straight white guy because it's just not as free for all. But also if you're a straight white guy, you should probably be high fiving because it just means there's more. There's more for everybody. Mm -hmm.